everybody. Welcome to Quartzville Railroad video number 13. Uh, this is the third of a four-part series that I'm doing on operations on my layout. Um, this video today is actually going to deal with how I move uh, the cars around on, on the layout from one spot to another. I, I use a, a simplified system of car cards and waybills uh, that I made myself and I talk about that in detail on this video. So I um, hope you do enjoy watching it. Let's get to it. Okay, let's talk about car cards. Um, this is the way that I do uh, the switching on my layout is with the uh, car cards and waybills. So um, every car that I have, and we have this brown box car, uh, gets, a, uh, gets a car card. And these are another thing that you can purchase online. You get a, get a lot of them. Um, and that's fine to do it that way. They're, they look really professional, look, look really nice. I've just chosen to print my own. Um, I went into Microsoft Word, printed out what I needed to, and you can buy a, a package of, uh, of cardstock at, at local hobby supply stores uh, and print them out and cut them out and tape them a little bit and you have yourself a card card. So that's what I have here. So, so this I, I have on the card card, um, the type of, of card is, in my case, I'm not into that much prototype uh, detail of the type of card is. Box cars, fine with me. It's a box car. Um, I also have the reporting marks, um, the railroad, and the and the marks on there. I also chose on here to put the color on it because it's in scale. It can be hard to see sometimes depending upon the lighting and, and how things are working with your eyeballs. So sometimes it's easier just look for the brown box car. I can handle that, or the blue box car, or the red. Uh, gondola, what, whatever that may be, it might be easier to see it that way. So um, every every car has a has a has a car card with it, and when you have it on a layout, like I'll just put this over here by the uh, cement plant, I drop the the card into the uh, cement plant box, and there you go. Now everything's marked up. So as long as you're really good about keeping keeping everything together, you won't have any worries about where your cars are. They're if they're on the layout. Uh, they should be um, in one of the box, the bill boxes, and if they're um, stored like underneath the layout where a lot of mine are, they're back there. Um, they're all stored together with the car cards. All right, so now we're going to talk about waybills, and what a waybill is is just a, a way. I don't know if that's the right terminology for it, but it's a way to get a car, tell a car to go from here to there. And there's lots of ways that you can do that on a model railroad. Um, I've chosen to do it with waybills, and that's how you do it. So. So you can buy waybills online. Uh, they, they're called four cycle waybills that you can typically purchase and no problem, nothing wrong with them. You, know, you just write in some information and that tells it where to go. Why they're called four cycles, you can actually turn them around and back and forth uh, to have the, have the different car do four types of operations. Maybe start in a yard, go to an industry, uh, that's one move, then go to, from an industry to another industry, that's another move, and then back to the yard would be a third or a fourth move, and you, and you can play games with the different uh, types of scenarios that you have. Um, another, just being cheap as I am, I just chose to print my own. I went into Microsoft Word, uh, made, made a Word document for it, and uh, got some card stock and just print these out. So I only have two cycle cards, so you have the cycle one, which is on top, turn over, um, that's cycle two. I don't have anything on the back yet. They're just blank. So most of my trains at this point just go from the yard to the industry and from the industry back to the yard. They just go back and forth. So that's easy to do. Um, so uh, what you need to work out though, one of the, the fun for me anyway, is, is for each of your industries figuring out what types of cars you need. I know I've talked about that in, uh, in previous videos. But that's uh, to me is really fun to do the kind of the analytical part. So how I've done it is I've got a, a white envelope here, and this is Pitter's pipe. So that's one of my industries that we talked about previously, and all the different scenarios that you may have. So each one of these has a card, and so like this first one here is for uh, for an empty would be for an empty uh, flat car. So if a flat car was going to get there, it would, it would the first cycle would be to go from the yard to Pitter's pipe. So it has marked Pitter's and empty on there. And then after it gets there for the next day, the next cycle is you turn it over and it says back to Albany, which is the name of the yard, and it's loaded with pipe. And it goes back to the yard and then eventually it comes off the layout. If I wanted to have a third and fourth cycle, I could do that on the back to go to a different industry if they were selling the pipe, for example. But I've got uh, some of those for, um, for, for got a couple of those for, for flat cars. I've got another one here for the plastic beads, like we talked about in a previous video. This would be for the... Uh, covered hopper for plastic beads going to Pitter's Pipes and then turn over uh, back to Albany as an empty. So uh, that's how I do my uh, my selection of car cards. And I've got an envelope of these for all of my other uh, locations. The loading dock, Dave Salsa, Crops Implements, 
and then the lumber track, the lumber track and the tank track. So when I'm going to make a uh, have an operating session for a day. This is where I get all I store my store all my car cards uh, to figure out what's going to happen and, and determine all that on the specific day. So now let's get to how do you actually determine how many cars you get and where do those cars go? How do you do that on a daily basis? Okay, so this is my operational scheme for how I determine. Uh, which cars go to which industry on any given day. So what I've made is a, a Google Docs document so I can access it on any of my devices, on any of my computers, uh, pretty much anywhere in the world if I really, <clears throat> excuse me, if I really wanted to. And I'll, I'll show you this first one here, uh, which is Pitter's Pipes. Uh, that's the one we've, we've talked about some in, in this video and in previous videos. Um, I have a description for what they do. They receive plastic pellets and covered hoppers and ship plastic pipe on flat cars. So there are six different uh, operational things that could happen on any given day. So uh, one and two are that they receive a, a covered hopper and an, and an empty flat car. So a third of the time, that's what's going to happen. Uh, one out of those six times, they're going to receive a covered hopper only. Uh, another time, they're going to receive an empty flat car only. Uh, one time out of six, uh, we'll remove all the cars for that industry. So anything that's there um, in front of the industry that day, we'll just remove all the cars and get them out of there. And then six is hold any cars uh, for that industry. So if there's any cars out in front of the industry, we're just going to hold them for a day. The, the scenario being that, that Peter Spice wants to hold the, uh, the gondola or the flat car or both for another day um, to get it loaded or unloaded um, or whatever. So uh, there's six of those for each one, and you can have as many of them as you want for uh, your industries on your layout. You can have two or three or 50 of them, uh, whatever you like. And uh, just scrolling through the rest of these, I have uh, six, uh, I have a total of six uh, scenarios for each of the industries that I, that I have out there. And why did I choose six? Well, uh, let me show you why. Okay, so why six? Why do I have six for uh, the number of scenarios that I have for each industry? I chose that because it's really easy for me to uh, determine what happens on that industry in any given day. All I have to do is roll a dice, roll that out. Uh, whatever number it comes up with, that's what happens on that industry for that day. If you want to have 12 options for it, you just have to roll uh, two dice if you want. If you only want two options, you can flip a coin, do heads or tails. Uh, lots of ways to, to relatively randomly choose which, uh, which scenarios happen on your layout um, on, any, on any given day or any given operating session that you have. Um, you can use Excel. I think there's, a, there's a, random, a way you can pick random numbers in Excel. There's random number generators on the internet that you can get. All kinds of ways that you can get that. So like I, said, I chose six just because it, it helps me just to roll the dice. Um, if it gets down to two, we can flip a coin. You can also, if you have a, a Google Home like I have, uh, you can just ask it. Hey, Google, flip a coin. It's heads. There you go. All right, it is uh, time to make the switch list for today's operating session. So I'm going to walk you through that process. I have my tablet here with the uh, operational scheme for all the different things that can happen at each industry. I have a piece of paper and I have a pen and I have my uh, die here that I'll be using. So I'll be going through each of the industries and uh, figuring out what they're going uh, to receive today. So we'll start with Pitter's Pipes. Uh, as I talked about yesterday, um, a one and a two. Um, if I roll that, that's uh, receive a covered hopper and an empty flat car. Uh, three is receive a covered hopper only. Four is receive an empty flat car only. Five is remove all cars from that in industry. And six, hold any cars from that industry. So let's see what's going to happen today. It's a six. So we're going to hold cars. So I'm going to write that down here. Pitters hold cars. And then I'm going to go ahead and repeat this for um, all of the other uh, industries that I have to switch today. Okay, so uh, we've got our switch list for what's going to happen today. Um, Pitter's Pipes, we're just holding cars for him. Uh, Krupp's Influence, they're going to receive both a box car and a flat car today. 
Um, the loading dock, Dave Salsa is going to get a, a, a tank car of chili oil so they can make all that good salsa. Um, over at the lumber mill, uh, they want a flat car for the uh, to, to get, lo get get dimensional lumber loaded up. Uh, they want us to remove one that's there and also off spot one. So basically change it from one spot to the other spot if there's two out there. So that's what I have to go see what we have today. Um, for the wood chips, they want us to hold the gondola that's there today. So apparently they didn't get it loaded up or something. So they want us to hold it for another day. Um, on the tank track, uh, they want one delivery of tank. I guess we're one, one delivery on a, in a, in a tank car. I guess we'll call it hydraulic fluid today. And then remove any others. And then if there's a box car of machinery there, uh, they want us to hold that because uh, they want it for another day uh, to unload the machinery from there and get it, get it, get it ready to go. So it looks like we're going to have... A box car, a flat car, a tank car, another flat car, and a tank car. So just a total of five today. So we could make this easy and just when I actually physically put them onto the uh, end of the yard uh, to just put them in order the way that they're supposed to be once they get out uh, to the different industries. I'm going to make that random too and just have these five cars uh, brought in randomly so that there's a little bit of switching that has to take place at the yard before they go out to the industries to be delivered. How do I do that? Well, I've got them numbered here, uh, one to five, what they need, uh, what's needed at the, at, the two, uh, at, at the different industries today. And I'll use my Google Home, which is right there, to uh, randomly choose them uh, in order. So let's do that. Uh, hey, Google, pick a number between one and five. Here's a random number. Five. Five. Okay. So I came up with five. So the first one in, in order that's going to be put on the layout is the tank car for the lumber mill. So that'll be one. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat that for these other four. Okay. And uh, just like that, we now have the order, which is a little bit different than uh, what uh, they're going to need to be delivered at, which is good. There'll be a little more operational interest uh, to get this done and uh, get them set up at the, at the yard before they actually get sent out to uh, the different industries. So with that, let's uh, get out to the layout and uh, move some trains around. Okay, thanks everybody for uh, watching Quartzville Railroad video number 13. Really do appreciate you uh, getting through the end of that. Hope you learned something about how I set up my, uh, my car cards and waybills and my, uh, how I move the cars around on my layout. Um, if you would, uh, would you consider uh, subscribing to my channel and liking uh, this video? If it's something that's of interest to you, uh, I really do uh, enjoy getting those uh, new subscribers and likes when I do see them. It um, really makes my day. So if it's something that's of interest to you, I would appreciate if you would consider doing that. So have a good day, everybody, and uh, we'll see you for video number 14 here in a little bit. <laughs>